To Venezuela now, where the U.S. is denying any involvement in an alleged plot to overthrow the Maduro regime. Venezuelan TV released this video appearing to show one of two Americans captured by security forces this week. Former U.S. Special Forces soldier Luke Denman apparently admits trying to arrest dictator Nicolas Maduro and bring him to the United States. Denman says he wanted to help Venezuelans take back their country. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says the U.S. government was not directly involved. There was no U.S. government uh, direct involvement in this operation. Uh, if we'd have been involved, it would have gone differently. Um, <laughs> as for who bankrolled it, we're, we're not prepared to share any more information about what, what we know took place. Anytime there are Americans that are uh, detained someplace, we'll work to get them back. We, uh, we will start the process of trying to figure a way if, if, in fact, these are Americans that are there, that we can figure a path forward. We want to get every American back. If the Maduro regime decides to hold them, we'll use every tool that we have available to try and get them back. It's our responsibility to do so. So Christina Ruffini is joining us now to give us a little clarity on what this is all about. Christina, the uh, Maduro government says this was a failed attempted coup and they've paraded these men in front of cameras. As I recall, a security firm that they say that they work for said that this was an attempt at freeing political prisoners. I think that was the statement they had put out. What are your sources telling you? What on earth is this all about? So. I have sources that I've talked to both inside the U.S. government, I have Venezuelan sources, and there's three competing theories. And I do want to press that these are theories and no one seems to quite know what's going on other than the U.S. government, uh, the transitional government have all said, this was not us, we didn't do this. And as you heard, Pompeo said that in the briefing room yesterday. The first theory is that this security company out of Florida, you know, think uh, Blackwater, kind of like them, but less organized and less effective, uh, approached the Guaido government in Florida and said, look, we can take care of your problems for $212 million. We can go into Venezuela. We can get Maduro and, you know, foment a revolution and everything will be solved. The Guaido government, according to this theory, said yes, gave them the go ahead, and they went in and did that at the behest of, of the transitional government. The second theory is that they approached the Guaido team. The Guaido team said, you guys are idiots. We're not doing this, walked away and then either went in and did it anyway or was approached by someone then pretending to be the Guaido government and they were kind of patsies and um, taken in on this counterintelligence operation that was pushed by uh, Cuban intelligence officials and the Maduro regime. The third theory is, look, the U.S. government indicted Maduro and these leaders on drug charges a few months ago. There's a $15 million bounty on these guys. So the other theory is these, these uh, the Silver Corps thought, well, if we go in and get these guys, you know, that's a multi-million dollar payday. Forget it. Let's just go try. So those are the three different options we're going with at the moment. And to be truthful, no one is quite sure what exactly is even closest to the truth. Uh, so, Rafini, uh, you were in that briefing yesterday with Secretary Pompeo, and I'm curious about the language that he used when he was asked directly about direct involvement. He said the U.S. has no direct involvement uh, and that uh, he's not prepared to divulge anything else that the State Department or the U.S. government is aware of. Um, so uh, that... When I hear language like that, uh, my next question is, well, what about indirect involvement? So I'm curious about these two Americans who were captured. Do you know if there's any kind of uh, plan underway to bring them back to the U.S.? I mean, look, the U.S. government, since we closed our embassy there, does not have direct diplomatic relations with Maduro. Now, there are back channel talks and there are ways for them to communicate because, remember, they're trying to negotiate his exit from the country, but there is no U.S. consulate that can go try to see these guys in prison. The way we've been doing it is the Swiss uh, are our protecting power there, kind of like they are in Iran, but the Maduro government hasn't officially accepted their credentials. So the Swiss are unofficially acting on our behalf, and they've done that with other individuals who we've tried to get released uh, and out of Venezuelan custody. I would assume, uh, you know, at the end of the day, these are Americans in a foreign country in custody, and the State Department always says their number one mission is to help Americans abroad. So I would assume there is some sort of effort underway to provide consular services, to contact them, to try to see what this trial Maduro has said they're going to have is going to be. I would imagine it won't be the most objective trial any of us have ever seen. Um, but the State Department has just said, so far on the record, we're aware of it and we're working on it. 
Um, so Nicolas Maduro has, has certainly uh, made the most of this incident, uh, parading these men in front of cameras. But it's also coming at a time, I mean, Venezuela has been struggling for a while now, but there was a major prison riot in Venezuela. Obviously, the relationship between the U.S. and, and Venezuela is particularly tense. Uh, the Trump administration indicted Maduro and other Venezuela officials uh, for drug smuggling charges. Can we talk about sort of the politics of this all and, and whether or not uh, this ploy is, uh, Maduro is attempting to use this to, to his advantage politically. Several experts I've spoken to and sources I've talked to have said, look, you know, every dictator in trouble loves a failed assassination attempt, right? It helps rally the people. It says, you know, I, you know, people are coming to get me and, and I have to defend myself and our country. This is, this is dictatorship 101. When all else fails, stage an assassination attempt. We don't have proof that that's what happened, but it is a little convenient. You know, his country was already falling apart. Now, They've got the coronavirus, which is expected to hit South and Central America very hard. There's not a lot of healthcare infrastructure left. Most of the doctors uh, have already left Venezuela. You couldn't get medication. You couldn't get AIDS vaccines. You couldn't get anything. And now they are going to have a pandemic there. So he's in trouble. And this comes along right at the time he would kind of need to solidify power and try to try to gin up whatever support he's got left among the population. Uh, keep in mind, 7 million people have already left the country. And that exodus is continuing. Hmm. Um, and what are you hearing, Christina, from uh, the opposition, Juan Guaido? What are you hearing from uh, them with regards to these developments? They're saying it wasn't us. They say, you know, we're focused on governing. We're focused, focused on negotiating. We're focused on trying to, they said, you know, he was reelected to this transitional council. That's a little bit up for debate. But they say he's the rightful leader and they have international support and they're going forward. The thing is, is they are very aware that they are only in the position they are. Juan Guaido has only not been arrested because of the international community, because of the international support, which some, some experts and analysts have told me makes it less likely that they would support or risk something this, you know, this out there because they know they're only there by the grace of the U.S. and these other huge backers who Benoro, Maduro knows if he goes after them, he'll have heck to pay with, with the people who support them. That's why some people have said this just doesn't make sense that they would go out on this limb, that they would, they would endorse this crazy plot because it's something obviously the U.S. logically probably wouldn't support. But, you know, you never know. And it's a crazy world, and it just seems to be getting crazier. So we'll keep talking to sources, and I hope to have some more guidance in the next couple of days. All right. Uh, uh, Christina Ruffini, it's really good talking to you. Thank you so much. I've missed you guys. Nice to see you. Take care.